all-new Yamaha V6 Offshore F-350. It's a featherweight knockout, the lightest 350 horsepower outboard on the water, exhilarating boating and incredible control in a powerfully light design. The Yamaha V6 Offshore F-350. On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we come to you from the party boat basin at Captree State Park. As you can see, all the boats, they're getting ready for the big fluke season opener this Saturday, May 4th. Big day. We're going to all get out fishing. A lot of people are excited for it. We also have some other stuff in the forecast for you. Tune in. We have a lot of stuff this week. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Hey, today is May 2nd, and we have some big fishing news this week. It is the opener of the fluke season. That's this Saturday, May 4th. Now, keep in mind, the regulations did change this year for fluke. It's May 4th through August 1st, 19 inches. Then August 2nd through October 15th gets bumped up to 19 and a half inches, and that's at three fish per person. Also, another reminder. Porgy season is now open. That opened on May 1st. It's an 11 inch minimum size for vessel based anglers and a nine and a half inch size for shorebound anglers. And that runs through December 30, 31st. 30 fish per person for recreational charter boats and open boats. And that extends to 40 fishing uh, per person from September 1st to October 31st. Make 2024 your year to win. Compete in the Fisherman Magazine's Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. It's our subscriber-only season-long region-wide multi-species fishing competition to win a brand new Yamaha-powered Steigercraft 21 Center Console. Go to thefisherman.com to check out all the amazing prizes. Remember, this contest is for Fisherman Magazine subscribers only. Catch fish and enter to win. Sign up today. The latest digital issue of the Fisher Magazine is out now. We have Spoon Fed. It's about all those spoons, great lore used for years. Ocean Blues, the bluefish did move in and they are on the ocean front. Check this one out and search and finesse. This one's all about finesse crappy fishing in those saltwater ponds. And also, if you didn't check out the print issue, we had a product review from Fer uh, Feruno. Robert Moses Bridge Stripers, that's right up over here. And May the 4th be with you. This one's all about that May 4th fluke opener. The Coastal Kayak Clash is back for 2024. Win this Old Town Sportsman PDL 120 fully outfitted by yakattack.com. Our second place winner will take home this Hummingbird Helix 7. Win third place and you walk away $500 richer. And there are many other ways to win as well. We've got reels from Daiwa and lures and gear from Yozori. If you fish from a kayak and you're a Fisherman subscriber, you're eligible to enter the CKC. Catch one of eight qualifying species. Photograph them next to a flat ruler showing the Fisherman tag with your kayak clearly visible and get yourself on the leaderboard. This kayak only tournament kicks off May 1st and ends November 30th. Get all the details at thefisherman.com. We've got another open boat segment for you this week. Jenny talks about bluefish biology. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's open boat. And today, my little open boaters, school is back in session. I am doing another fish biology episode. Now, if you haven't already heard, the yellow eye demons have invaded the East Coast. I've been crushing them every single night. They are an absolute favorite of mine. The serial killers of soft plastics, the annihilators of plugs are here. And today I'm gonna give you a little rundown on bluefish biology. Now, first off with their Latin name, the Pomatimus saltatrix. That sounds like a new conventional reel coming out in 2025, but that is in fact their Latin name for the good old bluefish. Now, the females can lay between 400,000 and 2 million eggs, and those eggs can hatch after only 48 hours of being in the water. And the little baby blues, unlike their adult counterparts that feed on literally anything that moves, the little ones feed on plankton. Now, as they get older, of course, they're gonna feed on smaller fish. They're gonna see anything that swims around them. They're gonna try to take a chomp out of. Some of them have even been known to target humans. I know a lot of surfers are more afraid of bluefish than they are of sharks because of their just vicious reputation. They just wanna eat everything in sight. They are gluttons. 
and absolutely ferocious. Now, bluefish can live for up to 12 years, and the biggest record bluefish was caught out of Hatteras, North Carolina, and it was 31 pounds, 12 ounces. You think you can beat that this season? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just happy to catch one. <laughs> so bluefish are really cool because they can be found basically throughout the world's oceans, prominently in tropical to temperate waters. Most of the time they're very common in the Atlantic, but they can also be found in the Indian and South Pacific oceans. Now, since I familiarized you guys on the biology, it's always important to know a little bit fishy facts about the species you're trying to target. I'll get into the regs. If you wanted to keep the bluefish, they aren't really so tasty, but there are recipes that make them work. But, you know, catch and release if you don't want to eat them. So the regulations throughout the region, there's no closed season. There's no size limit. Anglers can keep three fish. However, if you're on a four hire boat, there's a five fish bag per angler limit. Now, targeting the species. <laughs> now, everyone thinks that you can only get them on top water. That's only if they're feeding, you know, they have blitzes, just like striper blitzes, bluefish blitz on the surface. My favorite top water lure to target bluefish is the Island X. This is in their amber color, and it's like a nice top water pencil. It has single hooks, so it's easy to remove the hooks. Bluefish have teeth. They are dangerous. You don't want to make the mistake I did. Just kidding. But there are people who have lost appendages to bluefish. Don't even try to lift them. Make sure you always have pliers. The Island X Lure. This thing absolutely crushes bluefish on the surface. It has an excellent action. It's basically like a pencil popper and it is loaded so it can cast even farther. Whether you're bluefishing off the boat or you're bluefishing off the surf, you can basically grab the top of the plug. Hopefully it's hooked on that tail hook and just pop the bluefish off. You want to avoid the mouth as much as you can. Next up in the water column is something that I've been crushing them on locally here. You can see the battle scars on this plug. This is the new Tsunami Tidal Pro Twitch Bait. And I swapped out the back hook for a single because it's just too many troubles. You're asking for trouble when you're using troubles for bluefish. So it's always good to swap out a back trouble for a single hook. And you, like I said, you can see the battle scars from this thing. It's got absolutely annihilated by bluefish and it has a nice rattle that just aggravates them even more. And now sometimes they're not even on the top or in the midwater column, they're on the bottom. So you basically have to jig them up. So what do I use when I'm jigging up bluefish? Just a handy dandy bucktail. You can never go wrong with a bucktail. You just jig it off the bottom and trust me, if there's bluefish around, they're gonna find it. They will hunt down your lure and make it their personal goal to absolutely annihilate it. One of the best fighting fish off the surf is the bluefish. Now, get yourself ready to go out there and target some blues and be mindful of your fingers because bluefish like those too. Stay safe out there and I'll see you guys on next week's Open Boat. For more than 20 years, Anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. If you're thinking of going on the beach this year and you have to inflate your tires, we tested three of them out. Check this out, see which one is best for you. After a long day on the beach fishing, one of the hassles is reinflating your tires. Some areas have air hoses that you could actually reinflate right there at the beach. Uh, but sometimes also, those could be long lines when everybody's getting off the beach and it could take a while. In the last bunch of years, there's been these inflators on the market. And there's a couple that we're gonna check out here and see which one might work best on the beach. First, we got the Makita. The advantage to this, it's got long battery life. You could use these Makita batteries. If one's dead, you just pop another one on. It has an LED light when you're using it, but there are some drawbacks. When you set the PSI, and you start it, it expects you to hold your finger down on the trigger. It will shut off when it hits the correct PSI, however. To fix that, I gotta use a clamp. This one is also a little expensive. It's a little over $100, and that does not include the battery. 
This is the Air Motto. You've probably seen this all over the internet. It's self-contained. It's rechargeable with a USB-C port. You just screw this on, put in your PSI, and off you go. Now, I've used this on the road on long trips. If my uh, air pressure's down a couple pounds, I've used this. And then I've got this from Harbor Freight. Uh, this is about 40 bucks. I forgot to mention, this is about $80. This is about $40, and it has a little gauge on it. It's simple. It doesn't automatically shut off. you got to keep an eye on the gauge, and that's how you would inflate your tires. But this also, this works off your cigarette lighter, so you really don't have to worry about recharging it or having enough battery power like this one. You just plug it into your cigarette lighter, and off you go. Next, we're going to test the inflators and see which one might be right for you. First thing that we're going to do is deflate our tires to 15 pounds, and then I'm going to time each one of these inflators and see how long they take to get to 32 pounds of pressure. Okay, let's get started, and we're going to start with the Makita first. Now let's test the inflator from Harbor Freight. Now let's check out the mighty Air Motto. So the final results are in on our test. We have the Pittsburgh inflator from Harbor Freight, about 40 bucks. It inflated the tire from 15 PSI to 32 PSI in about seven minutes. It worked well, just a little bit slower, and you got the cumbersome issue with the long cable that you got to plug into a cigarette lighter. But not a bad, not a bad item for $40. You've got this for $80. It was slow. It took 18 minutes plus to inflate that tire from 15 to 32 PSI. The other thing about it, in daylight, it's very difficult to read the front of the panel. At night, it's fine. In daylight, you can't see it. This is a no-go for the beach because it was only able to inflate one tire. I tried to inflate another tire and it died after four minutes, so no good. The winner is the Makita, the most expensive one, but it did the fastest job. It inflated that tire in about five minutes and there was plenty of battery power to keep inflating tires. Now, I know Milwaukee makes an inflator also. I'm curious if anybody out there has used the Milwaukee. Let us know in the comments how well that's worked out for you. So this is Tim C. Smith for thefisherman.com. The trophy bluefin bite at the Jersey Shore has been simply off the hook almost literally off the hook as well. Friend of mine who's uh, engaged in this, in this fishery, if I'm not mistaken, felt at least two dozen giants were brought to port during this past weekend alone here at the Jersey Shore. Captain Mike Nolan checked in with me this week. He uh, he had Rob Scudera and FJ Iantilli on. They had an 80-incher boated on his 23-foot Maycraft, weighed in at over 280 pounds at Twin Lights Marina over the weekend. My buddy Jim Peters, he texted me on Saturday. He said his crew taped one out, 111 inches, weighed in dressed at 755 pounds. Amazing. Now Jimmy sent me, uh, said to me later, uh, he said, you know, a lot of giants being caught, I've never seen so many. It's a great season, but I joking, jokingly responded back, that's only because the sub quota was still open. Well, that's no longer the case as of 11.30 tonight, May 2nd, because NOAA Fisheries announced on Wednesday that the trophy bluefin subquota has been filled. Now it's going to be back to the seasonal limits, only bluefin under that 73-inch uh, threshold. That's as of Friday. We'll revisit the HMS info at some point soon, maybe in the next couple of weeks. Now that that subquota is filled, uh, if you've gotten this notification, you'll see it on Facebook. Everybody's going to say, oh, the, the quota, it's shut down. No, 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 no. It's the trophies. Every year this time, 
The trophy bluefin fishery blows up in the New York bite. Everybody piles on them, but that usually only lasts a couple of weeks right on schedule. We will have a bluefin season, a yellowfin season, a longfin season, and a big eye season. We'll cover more on that in, a, in, a, uh, in next week or two, all right? Now let's check in with some upcoming events. We have the May 9th District 3 boating course that is at the West Islip Library. Then on May 18th is the Freeport Tuna Club annual fishing flea market that is at the Freeport Tuna Club Marina. Then June 1st to July 5th is our big surf rats ball surf fishing tournament from Bill Wetzel. It's a striped bass catch and release tournament. The proceeds go to benefit uh, kids need more charity, 35 bucks to enter. Hey, fishing's definitely picked up. You guys are sending those photos in. We're gonna head over to the map and I'm gonna show some of them to you guys. So starting off, we have Joe. He's from J Hooks Fishing Club. Turning eight years old on May 12th, and he hit the incoming tide on the oceanfront beach of Robert Moses. He was using a Joe Beggs chicken scratch color swarter. He caught his personal best and first bluefish of the year, 13 pounds. Raphael, he fished with Captain Tommy Fish from Black Bottom Charters in Seaford. They went out about 14 miles. He set out of Jones Inlet, overall a slow day but he caught his personal best tog at 8.78 pounds on a green crab. He also noted, I took the shell off knowing togs usually prefer soft baits in the spring. Hey, Joe sent me this picture of a double digit tog on the No Mercy. That was out of Jones Inlet. Then Bill, he was fishing a Western Nassau South Shore area. He had this 38 inch overslot striper that he took a picture and released right after. This one's a freshwater report. Harry, he sent in this report from a Patchogue Lake. He said, I was fishing for power baits for trout, but they were very picky. I removed the bobber and bounced along the bottom and nailed this little tank. Nice largemouth bass. Those bass are feeding on those trout this time of year. They just were stocked in the ponds. Hey, this one's from the family. Casey, my sister, with her pup, Charlie. She was fishing Patchogue River, had a nice schooly bite on swim shads. Here's one that she caught. Then Tim O'Connor, he caught this beast of a tog on the Sea Rogue out of Jones Inlet right before that season wrapped up. Nice job, Tim. Asante, he sends me these reports from the city. Uh, a bunch of Ren reports from him. He said, quick uh, report on stripers in my neck of the woods. He said, I've seen pics throughout the city of stripers being caught. The bluefish were in the bay last week as well. Also, I heard decent sized weak fish near Atlantic Beach area. He also went on a striper blackfish trip. He, had a porgy that he caught and released before the season opened uh, on a sandworm. He said that was the only interesting thing of the day. Also, he said he fished another pier in Jamaica Bay. He had substantial blackfish bites and he broke off a huge blackfish on a bridge piling. Then he said, here's his picture of Colum with a 36 inch striper from around the city. And that wraps up for him, but all good stuff from the city area. If you do have a notable catch, email me at mbroderick at thefisherman.com. Send it on in. I'll try and get into the weekly video fishing forecast or the magazine. Richron Owen, our meteorologist, his report is brought to you by Premium Bucktails. Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's check that weekend forecast. You can always check your favorite apps, weather tools, weather sites, whatever you got. This is a general heads up, general overview on the upcoming uh, weekend. First weekend of May, also the kickoff of the fluke season, and it's not going to be so pretty. We'll get to that in a moment. But first, uh, you know, past week, we had some nice weather, some nice days. Uh, big bluefish in the back bays. Some of the choppers going 8 to 12 pounds. Uh, these were all released on snap jigs. You know, still the premium bucktails doing the trick there in the back bays. Some of the anglers also getting some nice size uh, bass and some schoolie bass back in these areas. So uh, if you can get back there, top of the tide, uh, you know, probably a good time to go. And uh, if you can, uh, you know, get some of those bucktails down and jig a little bit, 
might have some fun on the light tackle. So it's it's a blast if you can get into them. So water temps, uh, they came up a little this week. We had some warmer weather earlier, but I think they're going to kind of uh, settle back uh, low to mid to upper 50s. I was reading about 60s, some of the back bays during the week. Uh, Friday's weather map, you know, it's okay, but uh, you can start more, more of an east-southeasterly breeze coming in. Saturday, we may get a window where it's not quite as windy, but I think uh, all bets are off on Sunday, kind of a gusty easterly breeze and southeast breeze with some rain coming in. So the weekend, yeah, it's, it could be better. It's fishable. I think the uh, the bays, Peconic Bay, the sound, uh, the surf should be okay, but I do see some rain on there, especially on Sunday. And the waves will be uh, kind of coming up. Uh, two to fours become four to eights pretty quickly Saturday night and Sunday. So the fishable day in the ocean would maybe be Saturday. Again, at Sunday, I think uh, kind of be the day you're going to want to just uh, kind of play it safe. And it's cool, too. 50 east near 60, uh, even cooler on Sunday with the rain coming down and that southeast breeze off the cooler waters. And Guru showing, you know, you know, east, southeast, not what you want to see on Friday. Saturday maybe settles a bit, you know, maybe 5 to 15. It could be a little better, but then right back up to 15 to maybe 20 for Sunday afternoon with some rain coming in. So, uh, you know, so so use caution Friday and Saturday. Sunday, I think all bets are off. Doesn't look too great. But, of course, some great weather comes back. Yeah, figures Monday and Tuesday of next week. So, again, if you're out this weekend, get some of those fluke in the back bays. Be safe. Catch them up as always. Matt, back to you. Now we're going to check in with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. Tim. Thank you, Matt. Well, greetings, everybody, from out here in Montauk. Uh, man, what a difference a week makes. It's pretty much game on out here. Uh, the big news of the week this week is the Miss Montauk did really good on their offshore tile fish trip. Uh, they loaded up on some nice tile fish. Um, got a couple pictures of that trip. Um, they are also going for opening day fluke on May 4th, which is Saturday. Uh, it's reservation only, so get on their website if you're interested in trying some fluke fishing. Um, the Viking has started porgy fishing out of Sag Harbor. I have a couple pictures of some porgies they did. Today was their first day Wednesday. So they'll be doing that out of Sag Harbor. Fishing's good. It's a shorter drive. Uh, check out their website for that. Uh, spoke with Dan on the Double D. He got some black fishing in before the season closed. Did pretty good on that, and he had a couple nice codfish as well. Um, he said he made a couple passes out in the rips. Didn't see a whole lot of striped bass, though. But there are striped bass on the beach. People are picking away in the surf. I'm um, starting to see them up here in some of the shallow spots. And the regular guys are driving around with surf rods on their trucks. So you know it's starting to get good. All right, everybody. Looks like a good weekend. Um, get yourself out there and try to catch some fish. Until next week. From Sag Harbor, Will. Thanks, Matt. Uh, report this week out of Sag Harbor. Guys, it's, it's good to be back. Uh, it's been a long, uh, long winter, obviously. So we're excited for the season ahead. Uh, fishing is actually starting to really pick up now um, and slow and steady. We're having, you know, now we're having reports of uh, striped bass. We've had reports of weak fish. It is uh, kind of the end of, of the short spring blackfish season, but that is an option. Um, and, you know, there are even some reports of, uh, of bluefin tuna coming from, from farther west. Um, so day by day, it's going to get better. Uh, we're obviously excited, guys. The season's here. Um, so get, get all your gear prepared. Hopefully you have it all ready. Uh, by now and it's time to get out there. Thanks guys, back to you. From Shinnecock, we're going to check in with Mike Dean. Thanks Matt, hey everyone. Striper fishing still going pretty good for the spring. Uh, Kim and Paul Palooza have been on them pretty good, a little bit out front of Marich's Inlet, both east and west, some in the back bays. Um, poppers, uh, for the most part, have been the ticket for those guys. I've caught on some plastics and, you know, some guys going at night are getting, starting to get some bigger bass moving through the back bays on uh, daughters and big metal lips. Um, ocean front bite, you know, not quite there yet, but definitely worth a try. They popped up like a week ago. It seemed to kind of like just a quick hit and we're on their way. But, you know, as those big fish that have been to the West start to move our way, um, definitely worth a try out on the, uh, on the open beach. Out in the ocean, really haven't seen a whole lot. A couple of people have scouted, didn't really run into a whole lot you know, once you got out into, you know, deeper water, right, right around the inlets, a couple of random, random fish, um, but everything's kind of coming together. So decent amount of mate moving through, the weather's going to start cooperating a little bit more, hopefully get out of this cold snap, get these water temps up and really get things rolling. Uh, porgies, fluke, starting to get more stuff to fish for a great time of year. So uh, let us know how you do. Another reminder, Friday, June 7th, Manhattan Cup. We're still looking for captains willing to take out a team of two to four anglers. 
uh, supply the gear for them to fish with, and we'll provide everything else. It's an unbelievable day taking out warriors on their path to healing. Uh, if anyone's interested, corporate sponsorships or to enter as a team, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. We're getting a really big crowd. We're starting to, uh, as we always do, start to be bigger than the year before. So very appreciative of that and hope that you know, some new people can make it. Anyone that's fished with before will come back again. And as always, thanks to the fishermen for their continued support of this. All right, get out there and fish this weekend. Catch a ton of fish. Back to you, Matt. From Northport to Cal Harbor Bait and Tackle Report. Hey, folks, it's a pleasure to be back with you again this weekend. Um, the fishing's been pretty good. You know, the weather was holding out. We're having these wonderful warm days. It brought the bite back on the bass. Uh, the bassing has been, like, really fantastic. Um the Triangle 1528C over by Connecticut into Oyster Bay down to uh, Nessaquag River and Stony Brook has seen some really steady action. The fish are beautiful. They look really nice and clean. Uh, the black fishing uh, seasons uh, wrapped up uh, Tuesday. So that was a really nice little season. You know, it started out pretty hot. And it kind of uh, slowed down a little bit for a few days with this drop in the weather temperature and it started picking up. The season we're leaving them biting till uh, fall so that's a great thing look to see porgies soon hit some of the beaches they're starting to come in and flutters starting to see them getting caught and uh you know that's a great thing to go out and do as well i don't see any fluke yet or hear any fluke reports uh they should be coming as we look to the east and really expect to see the squid they're usually right behind the squid so keep your ear to the ground and find out stony brook when they start catching squid and over by mount sinai you know that those fluke are very close by. Uh, the blues are basically on the south shore. I don't see any blues up here on the north shore yet, but that could change, uh, you know, during the week. And uh, it's just great to be out there and having a good time and spending it with friends. As always, I bid you peace and tight lines. Finally, with some great news. The Port Jefferson Harbor boat ramp renovation project appears nearly complete and should be opened any day now. Now, if we could only get the town of Brookhaven to turn on the parking lot lights at night, it would be so much safer for everyone. But until the boat ramp opens, I'll keep fishing for my Sea Eagle inflatable fish sup 126 from SeaEagle.com, which gives me easy access to just about any body of water. Grass shrimp and rain bait in the half inch through two inch sizes have flooded the bays, harbors, and near shore waters. I thought throwing the NLBN 3 inch paddle tails would match the hatch pretty closely, but after getting no takers, I switched over to our very own Long Island legend, Captain Gary Kid Cochise of Kid Cochise Outdoors Kid YouTube, Cochise Outdoors. Con Slick 5 inch Con sandals. Slick and as always, it was lights out. A non stop one hour bite landing four stripe bass and the 25 to 26 and a half inch class before heading to the 25, office. Guys. These baits also work great on fluke, with opening day coming this Saturday, May 4th. However, I must honestly say the bite has slowed down to a trickle compared to striped bass opening day, and the stripers are being super finicky due to the presence of tiny bait fish. However, I do expect things to continue to improve as the season progresses. So get off those couches, grab a buddy, and get out there and fish. If you have any questions, search Hawaiian Dan or TalkFishTV.com, and I'll do my best to help you out. Until next week, stay safe out there. Look out for one another and keep spreading the aloha. Now back to you, Matt. From the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey Matt, Fire Island report, things are starting to happen. Uh, water warmed up, a lot of bait came in. There's striped bass in the inlet chasing rain bait. There's a couple of striped bass in the back country on plugs. Uh, first weak fish I heard caught, also a couple of big bluefish caught. So things are really starting to happen. Uh, you know, there's reports down from the big bay, I'm talking like off of uh, Patchogue, Bayport, uh, off of Hexha State Park. It's wide open down there, but there are fish to be caught. There's striped bass and there's some weak fish down there as well. So I look for things to get really good. The fluke opener is this Saturday. Everybody's geared up for that. So that's it. I will keep you posted. We'll talk to you next week. Now we have Brendan Rutigulano from Captree Bait and Tackle. Thanks, Matt. Just wanted to welcome everybody to the season. We're super excited here. We just restocked the whole store and we'll be opening uh, May 4th for Captree as well as Jones Beach. Uh, Captree will be open daily 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Jones Beach will be 9 to 7 on weekends only for now until Memorial Day. Uh, so Saturday fluke season starts. There's already fluke on the piers uh, by catch that people have been going for bass and blues but you know the fluke are hungry so they're going after it. Uh, talking about bass and blues, open beach, uh, piers, uh, 
just local areas in general, all soft plastics and bait. Uh, they're definitely out there. Go fishing now. That's why we kind of got our button gear to open up a little bit sooner. Um, so again, soft plastics, uh, glow, uh, yellow has been working as well. Uh, so, you know, get out there. Uh, May 5th, Jones Beach strike a rod demo at field 10, right in front of the shop with GW custom rods, lure walker apparel and lures. We'll be giving away one of the lure walker, uh, needle fish for one lucky person that comes around and uh, tests out those rods. And everybody who puts a deposit on a rod or does a uh, rod purchase at the store for the weekend will cut a free lure walker uh, needlefish. So come on out and uh, you know let's have some fun. Thanks guys, we'll see you around. We're back with Brendan Rutigliano. We all know about his high school fishing contest that he runs. Check out this award he gave out. Thanks again, Matt. I just wanted to congratulate everybody that participated in the Long Island Rod Company High School Fishing League this year. Uh, we had over 18 schools eligible and participating, uh, which the prize winner of this fancy trophy, which will be displayed at Captree Bait and Tackle over the summer, is Babylon School District or Babylon High School. They uh, won first place and they had over a thousand points, which was awesome. Uh, second place went to Islip and third place went to Cinema Riches with special uh, mention of Belmore JFK, Ward Melville, uh, Port Jeff, and uh, that's pretty much for special uh, mention. Uh, guys, if you're in high school or you have uh, you know, a son or daughter in high school, please message us. We'd love to start more clubs. Uh, you can join any time of the season. It's super easy to participate. It's just camera phone and a measuring tape. More rules will be on our website. So uh, get out there, go fish, and maybe you can win some prizes. Thanks again. Up in Huntington, Captain Gage. Thanks, Matt. What's up, everybody? It is great to be back. Captain Gage here reporting to you from Huntington Harbor here on the North Shore of Long Island, where I fish seven days a week for SandCityCharter.com. Check it out. Since opening day, we've managed to get on some bass in our area. It's been pretty productive. Um, opening day, we saw birds working out in the bay. The seals were feeding. Water temp was 52. So we moved into the back bays where the water temp was 57, uh, landing five nice springtime bass with 131-inch slot fish and four over slot fish. Congratulations to Linda with the biggest fish, winning the pool with 36-inch bass. That was great. The following week, I went down to South Florida to take my nieces and nephews out for some deep sea fishing, landing this beautiful black fin tuna, and we did some kite fishing with goggle eyes bait, and uh, we had live bait for the sailfish, and we managed to land this beautiful sailfish as well, so this was an epic trip, I had a ton of fun, uh, but I had to shoot right back up here for some more charters towards the end of the week last week, a nice body of fish moved into our area, and uh, we did manage to find them on the troll, and while we were trolling, they were definitely hitting, we'll put out a couple of different colors and see what's working best, but white was definitely working best on the troll, so they were hitting the white mojos more often and once we find them stacked up we're gonna put the mo uh, mojos away and the trolling rods up in the rack and we're gonna break out the light tackle and move over to the flutter spoons where even uh, yesterday we were catching them uh, and they're hitting this gold spoon a lot more so the fish is still here we managed to get on them last night uh, towards the evening time birds were working water temperatures have jumped up uh, right now here in the harbor, uh, water temp is 58 degrees, and uh, the fishing's been very good in our area, so uh, if you want to catch some bass, let us know. We'll get you out there. Uh, blackfish season comes to an end this week and passes the torch over. We'll be looking for the fluke, so we're going to hopefully show you some flatties next week. We'll get out there this weekend on uh, opening day for fluke season, and uh, hopefully we'll be showing you some more pictures of some beautiful bass. And uh, the water temperature and the sound right now, as of yesterday, was 54 degrees, so it really heated up out there. And uh, we'll keep you posted. We have not seen any adult bunker in our area. Uh, yesterday, we did see birds working on some bait, so and I am seeing a lot more bait in our area, but I have not seen any adult bunker hard to come by right now here on the North Shore. I'll let you know when those pop up, and we can live line them and uh, have a lot of fun out there. Uh, in the meantime, wishing everybody bent rods, 
tight lines, and I'll see you out on the water. Back to you, Matt. With the Fly and Freshwater Report, Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, spring is here. I was fortunate. I got out on one of the local beaches by me and uh, been catching some small stripers. Nothing big, but still a lot of fun, you know, on a fly rod. You know, and, and it's just been perfect weather for this. Uh, not too warm. The tide's right. The wind is right. So I hope to get out and get some tonight. Um, as far as the freshwater goes, well, I guided actually uh, Charlie and his grandson in the Westchester area. Now, I get up there and fish there a few times a year. And every time I go, I just say, what a great, you know, it's only 40 minutes. 40 to an hour and a half depending which river in the Westchester area I go to but you know what caddis were hatching Hendrix blue blue wing olives uh, we had a lot of fun we didn't land a lot but we did catch hook some but you know they're new and it's tight fishing and you got to practice and it's, it's really it's exciting I really like a challenge now I'm all in about the salt water and I'm going to be doing a lot of saltwater uh, meetups. And the only way to really know about them is you got to sign up for my newsletter at riverbayoutfitters.com. Uh, they're free. We're going to meet up at different beaches throughout the summer. So the best thing to do is get out there where you can. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. This is like this. It's May now. but And I'm really looking for bluefish. So... Until next week, tie lines, everybody. Raul Ortiz, the Urban Angler, checks in from around the city. Hey guys, Raul Ortiz here, the Urban Angler, with my report. As you know, fishing has been pretty good along the north and south shore beaches of Long Island, anywhere in the five boroughs. Upstate New York is pretty hot with fish being caught, you know, 30, 40 plus pound fish being caught up there right now. Uh, plus the herring are up there and Spawning time should be done any day now, and those fish are going to make their way back down and just devour everything. Uh, a nice wave of fish came through the South Shore beaches, and um, a lot of them were schoolies, uh, with your occasional 20-30 pound in the mix. Uh, I also fish uh, the Great South Bay. A lot of fish being caught, schoolie size up to about 15-20 pounds being caught uh, and uh, I'm sure there's some other fish bigger than that probably been caught uh, just not reported anyway um, SP minnows guys you know bugtails plastics metal lips starters uh, a lot of different laws are working um, if you like to snap jig that works as well if you like to bait fish bunker blood worms calamari uh, shrimp clam all kind of there's a variety of things that you have to try and use to figure this out but uh, if you put in the time guys you're gonna get rewarded um, a lot of fish have moved on east and um, you know the fishing is only gonna get better from here and out guys and um, you probably got another two months of this before it dies right out anyway uh, I want to give a quick shout out to my buddy Raul Andres my buddy Brandon Joe nothing ever changing and the fish whisperer um, the Striper Whisperer, I'm sorry. That's my buddy Nick. Uh, he's also known as uh, Surfcasting the Island on YouTube. Anyway, you can give us a check out if you want or follow if you like. Um, besides that, tight lines to you all guys and the best of luck. And congrats to you guys who got on your first Stripers this year. Anyway, back to you, Matt. Hey guys, Nuno here from Tyler Tackle in Rye, New York in the Western Long Island Sound. Fisherman Dream Boat Contest. We are officially a weigh-in station. We have the forms and the scale. So if you have that trophy catch and want to be in a Dream Boat Contest, bring it in here. We'll get it weighed in and the form submitted for you. Anyway, what's hot? Striped bass. Striped bass, striped bass. Very hot right now. They're moving. Very effective are going to be the umbrella rigs and the mojos trolling. Why? The fish are on the move. They're not really staged in any area just yet. So we want to troll. We want to cover some ground. We want it to be close to the bottom where most of these fish are lingering and hitting. So the umbrella rigs and your mojos are your most effective right now. There are points where we find them really stacked when we're trolling and that's when you can use your flutter spoons or diamond jigs. And guys have done well, have 
multiple double digit trips on the flutter spoons and metals when you find them stacked up. It's really key to be ready, have your stuff tied up so when you do find them stacked like that, you could drop right on it. Another thing I just opened up today is porgy. Porgy fishing just got started. We've gotten reports already from the party boats that it's pretty good, so that will continue. Fluke opens up this coming weekend. Blackfish is done now in New York. Offshore bluefin tuna, we know guys that were out there yesterday and hooked up. Done, running down to the Jersey Shore beaches, a few fish off Long Island or in the Rockaways, but a lot of the fish have been coming off of Jersey, not deep water, trolling the ballyhoo has been very effective. So that's it for this week's rundown. We'll see you guys next week. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and their social media pages. Don't forget this video is available as a podcast on iTunes and Google Music. Search for the Fisherman Magazine podcast and subscribe so you can listen to this broadcast and other content. Again, as you can see, everybody is super excited getting the boats ready, painting them up, sanding them down. They're going to be ready to go for the May 4th fluke opener. Hey, but also remember there are bluefish invading the bays. Striped bass bite is excellent, and there's some weak fish around too. And porgy season is open now as well. Get out there this weekend. It's going to be beautiful. We'll see you next week.